Hi guys, this is uh, Krithin Kalra for uh, Android Guider. So usually we shoot indoors, but uh, this time the weather conditions are really good out here. Uh, you might be able to make out that uh, the wind is blowing in the background. Uh, yeah, so uh, beautiful weather conditions. So I thought that I should uh, rather shoot outside than inside. So in our previous video, you saw the benefits of uh, open source apps. And uh, we also told you that uh, we will be covering up uh, an open source app for Android every week from now on. So yeah, today we will be taking a look at floating volume. As the name suggests, floating volume makes the volume dialog floatable. This application places a circular icon on your screen which you can move around anywhere and uh, tapping on the icon will show the different volume levels. There's a volume icon in the top right corner of the dialog box. Using this icon you can uh, toggle through different ringer modes namely silent, vibrate and ring. Floating volume was uh, designed for devices with uh, damaged volume keys, but uh, I have found myself uh, using this app for entirely different purposes. I usually use floating volume to make uh, single-handed use uh, much easier, so let me elaborate on that a bit. I travel mostly via public transport and uh, that includes uh, trains and uh, buses and uh, most of the times I don't uh, get a seat, so as a result I have to stand and uh, one of my hands will uh, either be holding onto the side support or onto the ceiling support and uh, I use my other free hand to browse through the social feed and you know to scroll up and down now the phone that I uh, use uh, it's a uh, Redmi Note 3 that is my daily driver and uh, it's uh, it has a five and a half inch uh, display and uh, the volume keys are uh, on the higher side so given the large size of the phone I find it uh, tough to uh, reach the volume keys uh, just with one hand and uh, this is where uh, floating volume uh, helps me out and uh, that makes it easier for me to control the music volume while commuting so it got uh, dark outside and uh, I had to come indoors to shoot the remainder of the video. So as I was telling you, another place where I have found myself uh, using this app a lot is while uh, watching YouTube videos. Unlike uh, MX Player and uh, VLC, YouTube doesn't offer uh, sliding volume controls. So I had to use uh, the volume keys to configure the volume levels in the YouTube application. And uh, there were times when uh, I was lazy enough to extend my fingers to the volume keys. So there too, I used uh, floating volume to help me out. Honestly, since I started using floating volume, I haven't uh, used my volume keys much. Uh, that's because uh, floating volume makes it a lot easier and uh, much more convenient for me to control the volume levels. Uh, apart from the added uh, convenience, and ease of control, there are a lot of other things which I love about this app. Firstly, you can uh, change the transparency of the icon. As I said, I use floating volume while uh, watching YouTube videos. Now if the icon is uh, completely opaque, it will uh, interfere with the content that you are watching. And uh, the developer has uh, looked after this and uh, there is an uh, option in the app settings to configure the transparency of the icon. Another thing that I liked about floating volume is the ability to customize its looks. Now I use Substratum themes all the time and uh, in case you don't know, Substratum is a theming engine for Android which allows you to customize how the software looks like. There are options for changing the background color as well as the accent color. So Substratum themes change the look of the volume dialog box too and uh, I really like uh, when uh, the floating volume dialog and the original volume dialog offered by Android when both of them look the same. Again, uh, the developer has uh, looked after this too. There are uh, several uh, coloring options in the app using which uh, you can uh, tweak the accent and the background color of the floating dialog. There are a couple of other settings in the app too. For example, uh, you can choose among uh, three view layouts. I prefer the vertical layout because it is uh, easier for one-handed use. There are uh, a couple of other options too. You can uh, choose to save the last position of the floating icon. There is also an option to enable the movement of the floating volume dialog box. And uh, if you enable that option, you can uh, also enable the bounce effect. So when I drop the volume dialog it uh, shows a rebound animation for some reason though the rebound animation is always along the left and the right edge even when I drop the dialog box towards the top or the bottom edge then also it will uh, do that uh, sideways rebound then there is an uh, option to change the icon opacity I have uh, already covered that up and uh, following that there is an uh, option to show the voice call bars only during calls lastly you can uh, configure what all volume levels should be shown in the dialog box when you want to disable floating volume, you simply have to press and hold on the floating icon and then uh, drag it towards the bin at the bottom edge of the screen. Alternatively, you can uh, also add a quick setting toggle using which you can uh, enable or disable the service. So there we have it guys. This is a uh, floating volume. Uh, the app has been uh, developed by Adam Mikoski. I am probably getting that uh, last name wrong. And uh, this is how Google says it.
Adam Majkowski. I am really not sure whether Google got it right as well. Anyway, I do hope that either myself or Google got the name correct. Uh, so the app is available in two variants. It comes in a donation version, which is available on the Play Store and uh, the free variant is available on XDL apps. Uh, the app developer says that uh, if you like the app, then you can uh, thank him by purchasing the donation version uh, from the Play Store. And uh, the donation version costs about uh, $1 or uh, rupees 55. That was the Indian pricing on the Play Store. And uh, the app will uh, work uh, without root access as well. It will uh, work on uh, all uh, Android versions uh, from uh, 5.0 to anything uh, above that. So it will uh, work on Lollipop, Marshmallow, Nougat, Oreo and uh, even the upcoming Android P. I will be having uh, all the requisite links down below in the description box. So that uh, pretty much uh, does it for uh, this video guys. I hope you found this video helpful. If uh, that was the case, do give this video a thumbs up and uh, uh, subscribe to the channel if uh, you haven't already. So thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Take care and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Adios.